Hey students, in this notes, I'm going to explain how to factor by grouping. Um, so these steps that I'm about to explain are going to apply to any time you have a polynomial given in standard form, and you're needing to rewrite it into factor form. So just standard form is whenever you have the ax to an exponent. So for example, right here is fourth power, and then you have bx to the third power, cx to the second power, dx and then e. So this is standard form whenever you have it like that and then you want to turn it into factored form which is when you have the factors with exponents if needed and most of the time they're binomials in here but there, there could be trinomials too. So you want to rewrite you want to have the skills to rewrite this into factor form. Okay, so let's try this first example right here. Um, you want to start by asking yourself, is there a GCF that you can factor out or you can divide each term by? So you look at the numbers 4, 4, 6, and 6. They can all be divided by 2. And then you look at also the variables. If they all have an x, at least an x, you can take out an x. Um, if you noticed, this one has at least one, so we're going to be able to take out one on all of them. So our GCF in this case will be 2x. So we're going to factor out that 2x, and you're technically dividing each term by 2x. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. x to the fourth, um, factoring out an x, you're going to be left with 3. Then again, you divide this number by 2, so it's negative 2. And then you take out an x, you factor out an x, so that's x squared. Divide this number by 2, so that's negative 3. And then factor out the x, so that's x by itself. And then 6 divided by 2, that's positive 3. And then if you factor out the x, then there'll be no more x left. So this is the first step. You want to factor out the GCF, if possible. Uh, the second step would be for you to look at the four terms that you have in here and group them. So group the four terms. That means you're going to write those parentheses in between them. So I'm going to change colors here. I'm going to write parentheses between these and then parentheses between these. So you turn them into two binomials. Once you turn them into two binomials, you're going to factor out the GCF again for the one of the binomials. And then from there, you're going to uh, look at these right here. So what is 2x to the third and 2x to the squared have in common? So they have a 2 in common. And then as far as the x is, the highest x that you can divide by is x to the second power, because they both have at least two x's. So that's the GCF for these two terms. So I'm going to take it out, and technically you're dividing each term by 2x to the second power, so 2 divided by 2 is 1. x to the third divided by x squared, so you're just left with x. If you look at the second term, you divide this by 2, so that's negative 1. x squared um, divided by x squared, or if you factor out the x squared, there's no more x's left. So you, you're left with that. So this is the binomial that you're going to repeat again when you do grouping method. You're going to leave a little space here and then repeat the binomial one more time. And then now, um, I taught my students to kind of just ask themselves, how can you get this binomial from this number that we're missing times these two terms? So how can we get negative 3x if we already have 1x? So the only way we can do that is by multiplying it times negative 3. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So this confirms that this negative 3 works. For now, we're going to rewrite the binomial that's repeated, or we can just rewrite the factors. So the one that's repeated, 
becomes one factor and we could just write x minus one since one is not necessary and then the other one is these two that are separate so we're going to have 2x to the second power minus 3. So these two binomials come from these four terms. So we still have this first GCF that we had taken out, greatest common factor, and then we're just going to write it in the front. So this polynomial becomes this factored form polynomial. All right, so I'm gonna try one more example, and then you can do these two in your notes. So the next one, again, we ask ourselves, is there a GCF? 4, 16, 14, 56. Four and 16 can be divisible by four. 14 cannot, though. The only numbers that 14 can be divisible by is a two and a seven. So we're going to have to say that since they all are even numbers, 2 will be your greatest common factor for the numbers. Now let's look at the g, g to the fourth, g to the third, g squared, and g. So there's at least a g in each term. So we're going to factor that out. It would divide each term by 2g. 4 divided by 2 is 2. g to the fourth power, and you take out a g, that's g to the third power. And then 16 divided by 2, that's 8. g to the third power um, taken out a g, where g, we have g squared. Negative 14 divided by 2, that's negative 7. g squared, if you divide that by g or take out a g, you just have 1 left. And then negative 56 divided by 2, that's negative 27. And if you take out the g, there's no more g's left. So that's the first step. Take out the GCF if possible. Next, we're going to group the four terms that you have. We're going to write those parentheses in between and create binomials. So these two together and then these two together. All right, so next I'm going to look at what we can, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually 28. I just realized that, my bad. My bad. Okay, so next we're going to look at the GCF for each one. And I'm just gonna write that just so you can have the steps. Each one of these, the two and the eight have a two in common, and then the greatest amount of Gs you can take out is G squared. If you take out 2g squared from this first part, if you divide this by 2g squared, you're just going to get 1g. And then 8g squared divided by 2g squared is just going to get 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Again, once you get this binomial, you kind of leave some space and write it again. 1g plus 4. And then you ask yourself, or you look at this, what can these two have in common? If it's negative 7, negative 28, you should be trying to think of what number times 1 gives you negative 7, and then what number times 4 gives you negative 28. So definitely negative 7 applies there. And then once we fill in that space, we now rewrite your factors. And then one of them, like, like I said, it's the one that repeats, and the other one is the separate. So the, the one that repeats, that's one of your factors, g plus 4. And the other one is 2g squared minus 7. And just double check if in the beginning you factor out the GCF, then you just bring it back, put it in the front. This may be how it was written, um, but also some students wonder if it could look the other way, like if they put 2g squared minus 7 first instead of g plus 4. And of course, this this are both going to create the same graph. It's like saying 1 times 2 times 3 is the same as 1 times 3 times 2. So yes. All right, I hope this video helps you with factoring by grouping. If you need more help, let me know.